Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is the walkthrough to the fourth Austin challenge in a back in time series which I created for Bellingcat. This set and many others can be found on Bellingcat's open source challenge platform which you can access by going to challenge.bellingcat.com. If you have not attempted to solve this one yet, give it a go first. If you're here because you have completed, well done, you should be very proud. If you're here because you want to find out how to solve it, I hope you find this video useful. So welcome to future plans. Let me zoom and I lost it, it happens all the time. Okay, so nearly two years after Bellingcat registered the organization in the Netherlands, the group released a document outlining their plans for the future. The author of this document also published several articles on the Bellingcat website. Your task is to find the article they published closest to when the document was created and provide its last word. And here is the answer format. I'm looking for just one word, not capitalized. That is it. Right. So let's digest this a bit because I'm aware it's a bit wordy. I apologize. <laughs> so let's just start a document so we can organize our thoughts a bit. Sometimes it's useful to divide the complex requests in small bite-sized tasks so it feels less overwhelming. So let's do that. I'm going to put the windows side by side. So this one here and this one there. Here we go. So at some point, Bellingcat registered their organization in the Netherlands, right? That means that the first thing we need to find out is the date when Bellingcat registered the organization in the Netherlands, quite straightforward. Then, nearly two years later, they released a document outlining their plans for the future. This nearly here implies it was not two years later, but almost. It will have been close enough to the two-year mark. So once we have the answer to the first point, we can determine our date range. That means that the second thing we need to establish is the date range of document outlining plans for the future, which we know will have been released nearly two years later. So for example, if we find out that Bellingcat got registered in the Netherlands in October 2015, then nearly two years later would have been around September 2017. So almost two years, not quite. Afterwards, we need to find a document that was released around that time. We know it contained Bellingcat's plans for the future, which hopefully will be a useful piece of information. So for our point three, we're going to put locate the correct document. Once we find that document, we need to identify two things. First, the author and second, the creation date. That means that point four and five will be identify the author of the document and check the creation date of the document. With the name of the author, we'll be able to go to Bellingcat's website and look through their articles. So point six will be locate articles from the same author on Bellingcat's website. Assuming there will be several articles from this author, we then need to check when they're published so we can identify which article was published closest to this point five, the creation date of the document. So for example, if the document we found on point three here, this document was created on August 28, 2019, and the author was Giancarlo, we would need to go to Bellingcat's website, look through Giancarlo's articles and identify which was published closest in date to that August 28, 2019. After locating the article, we just need to scroll all the way down to the very last word of that piece. That will be our answer. So the last point on our framework is locate the last word in the article. And that's it. I know it looks like a lot, but it shouldn't take that long. I'll try to keep it brief, but I feel like I have promised that a few times before and failed to deliver, but I'll do my best again. <laughs> okay, so first step date when Bellingcat registered their organization in the Netherlands. And let's quickly find this information by let me maximize this, searching for when did Bellingcat register their organization in the Netherlands? You know, sometimes I just ask Google a question like I'm a child using the internet for the first time. It's quite effective actually. So let's check out the results and look at this nonsense. This is the perfect example of why I avoid using AI for investigations. It claims that Bellingcat registered their organization in the Netherlands in 2014, which, pardon my English, is absolute bullshit. So I shall do as I usually do, and I'm going to scroll past the AI overview directly to the proper results. Here we go. We have a much better source here, which is Bellingcat themselves. And we can already see the answer here. It says 11 July 2018, but let's click it anyway and check it out. And let me zoom this even more. So much zooming. Here we go. So it says that the Stichting Bellingcat was registered on 11 July 2018. And and if we translate this weird word that I just tried to pronounce, he will tell us that this is Dutch, which is the language spoken in the Netherlands. And if we quickly googled this thing here, KVK and this one here, we'll see that they are both identification numbers related to the registration of an organization or Stichting, as they call it, in the Netherlands. So we have our date and let's just copy paste it there to keep it organized. 
We don't need a specific date, this is enough. Moving on, this means that the date range for the document will be almost two years later. So let's put here May to June 2020. So between 22 to 23 months after this July 2018. Now for our point three, we need to locate the correct document. We have enough information here on the briefing to come up with a nice string of keywords such as this one. Let's put it here. Bellingcat document plans for the future 2020. So we're looking for a Bellingcat document. So those are the two first keywords. <laughs> we also know that the document contains plans for the future because that is specifically mentioned in the briefing, which I just highlighted. There you go, plans for the future. And lastly, we have just established our date range, which will be May to June 2020. So let's do this. And look at that beautiful first result. It's a PDF document. It is hosted on the Bellingcat website and we can see from the link there that it was uploaded on June 2020, which matches our criteria. So let's just open this and I'm going to copy paste here to our neatly organized working document. Here we go, we can see 2020-06, which corresponds to June 2020, 23 months or nearly two years after July 2018. Here we go, when Bellingcat registered the Stichting in the Netherlands. So, so far so good. See, straightforward, I'm completely focused today. Now, the next step, oh my God, lost it. Okay, <laughs> not so focused after all. So the next step is to find the author of this document. It would be super, super helpful if at the end of this document, we had a love from followed by someone's signature. Unfortunately, that is not how official documents usually end. So we're out of luck. Maybe one day, right? I want to live in a world where that is a common occurrence. It would be so nice. In the meanwhile, how else can we realistically find the author of a document? So this sort of information alongside many other details can be found in the metadata. Not always, of course, metadata can be stripped and it can also be edited. However, knowing that finding out the name of the author of this document is a big part of this challenge, it's probably safe to assume that this specific information can and will be easily found. So it's here somewhere. I can confirm it's within the document. Now, there are a few ways to find out who is the author of a PDF document and I'll show you a couple. One that requires downloading it, and the other one that doesn't. So the first option will download this document and just open it with whatever software you have to view PDFs. And here is my, it's very minimalistic, it's exactly how I like it. So from here, we just need to select file and properties. So almost all software will have this option file and properties. And you can see here, author Eric Toller, which we can now put on our point four author of the document, Eric Toller. Brilliant. Okay, so now let me show you the other method that doesn't require downloading the PDF in case you don't want to. And for that, we need an online tool. So let's just get one by searching for check metadata. Here we go. First result is as good as any. Let me just open it and we need to click on view metadata. Here we are. Once we're here, you can see a link icon. Here we go. And you click on that and you just need to paste the direct URL to the PDF, which we have here. So let's just paste that, click add, and just wait a bit. And here we go. It's loading a bit of a scroll. And where is it? Here we go. Creator, Arik Toller. And you may also notice that he also shows the creation date as June 22nd, 2020, which matches what we could also see here, 22nd June 2020. So let's just put it, where is it? Here. There you go. 22nd June 2020. Brilliant. There's a space. I don't like it. Let me to be perfect. Here we go. Brilliant. See, look at how well this is going so far. Okay. Next step is to find a list of articles published by Arik Toller on the Bellingcat website. And that can also be achieved with a simple search string. Here we go. Back to Google is our best friend. So this is what you're going to use. Site column bellingcat.com. Arik. So basically we're telling Google to give us any results containing the keyword Arik within the Bellingcat website. And that is it. First result says Arik Toller author at Bellingcat. Perfect. Let's click that one. Another tab. Let me zoom this out because it's really big now. Okay. And let me copy paste this because it's now number six. Oh, where's the space? I don't want the space there. Great. So now here we have a photo of Arik here on the left with a short bio saying he was a researcher and trainer at Bellingcat between 2015 and 2023. Next to it, we have a list of articles he wrote starting with the most recent one. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, we'll see that there are five more pages. If we check them out, and I'm just going to click the next one, we can confirm that they all follow the same pattern. Bio on the left, here we go. A list of 10 articles in the center and most recent at the top, oldest at the bottom. Knowing that we're looking for an article published closest in date to our point 
5, which is 22nd June 2020, how can we quickly narrow this down so that we don't spend ages looking through dozens of articles? So if you place your cursor over each title, you can see at the bottom left of the browser window here, so this corner here, look at that, you can see there the URL. So blog posts often contain the year and month in their URL, so let me show you, I'm going to just copy this one and put it here right at the bottom. There you go, you can see there. So this tells us when the article was published. In this case, it would have been in October 2018. So instead of having to open all these links one by one in search of the closest in date to the 22nd June 2020, we can just move the mouse through the list and glance at that bottom left corner. Knowing that the one I just checked here is from October 2018, and knowing that they are ordered from most recent to oldest, we need to move upwards now. So we're going to check this one from the bottom there it says it's from April 2020 so perhaps we need to move back to the first page let's go back and see the bottom one it says there on the left bottom corner that this is from October 2020 knowing that the PDF document we found was created in June 2020 which will be closest in date will be the April or the October it will of course be the April one as that was two months before June whilst October was four months after June that means that the article that matches the requirement of the Austin challenge is the April one one on the next page let's go the next one again it's titled how not to report on Russian disinformation and you can see there April 2020 and it's also here 15 April 2020 let me zoom here we go here we go 15 April 2020 so now let's quickly copy paste the title to our neatly organized framework here we go let me put it up I don't need this thing anymore you can go away just need the last step we're so close oh my Okay, so for our last step, let's just scroll all the way down or just click the end key on our keyboards and scroll up a bit. And here we go. The last word of this article is record. And let's check if this is the correct answer and solve it. Woohoo, it is. Congratulations, we have solved this challenge. See how even requests that at first glance feel very complex can be easily solved by just organizing our thoughts and dividing our tasks into bite-sized steps. It's all a matter of how we look at the problem. I hope this video is useful. For the next one, we are going to tackle the last challenge, which I need to zoom out, toolkit tracing. In the meanwhile, have a great week.